Hello everybody, Tortoise Investing, coming at you today with another video. Today we're going to be answering some of the comment questions that I have received over the last two or three weeks or so. And uh, I don't know, I thought it would be a fun little thing to kind of just go through and answer some of your questions in a video. So, if you're new... Please hit that subscribe button for me and drop a like down below. Those things help the channel and the videos out a ton. I do a lot of uh, best stocks to buy now lists. I do a bunch of researching through stuff and show it all to you through Qualtrum. In constant portfolio updates, you will see that every single video. The status of my portfolio, as you see here. I'm not going to hide this behind any paywalls or anything. So yeah, join me on this investing journey. None of this financial advice. Let's go. So yeah, here we go. Here's portfolio. Uh, I did add Starbucks. I want to buy more Starbucks. So uh, two weeks from now, if things are still sitting at the way that they, they are currently, loading up on more Starbucks, gonna be loading up on more United Healthcare, and loading up on more Mastercard. Those are three. All of these I consider winners. I love my portfolio set up right now. It's nice. It's simple. I know what I'm invested in, so yeah, I like the setup. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the questions. Our first question coming from Steve the Cheese. Could you do DIS? I have a lot of shares right now. I sure could. Let's take a look at Walt Disney Company through Qualtrum Insights here. Just free cash flow yield, 3.96%. Got that dividend back, 0.92%. Payout ratio is a little bit high, but that is a okay. Let's take a look here. Over the last five years, down 30.51%. Over the last 10 years, 14.13%. They've been on a roller coaster. Uh, at one point, Disney was flirting with the 200 zone, and then they had that little fall from grace. But I think that the streaming thing that they've got, they're going to get that under control. I think that that's a high margin business, and uh, that's definitely going to help their profit margins, and they are. They're going to grow. I, I think uh, Disney Plus is going to absolutely grow and grow a lot. Um, so this is by quarterly, as you can see here, revenue. Uh, the thing that really want to pay attention to is revenue per subscriber. They are making more and more money per person that's subscribed. You want to see this. I like that. That is good. Very, very good. Uh, streaming subscribers, and you see this is, gr it's trending in the right direction. And we'll take a look at this uh, year over year too, just kind of get a better idea here. Uh, revenue up 7% over the last 10 years, growing up and to the right, No, nothing complaint about there whatsoever. And uh, as you see here, their Disney Plus services are growing. Uh, I don't think Hotstar is all that profitable for them, uh, but as you see, Hulu also growing a little bit, and uh, the Disney Plus services are growing pretty quickly, and I, like I said, I think that's really going to help Disney out in the long run. Uh, revenue by segment, as you see, is growing year over year. Uh, revenue by for, per subscriber is also increasing. Uh, free cash flow is something that uh, they are getting under control yet again they did have a couple really tough times here but you can see here profitability quarter over quarter nice little streak going on there uh, EPS training in the right direction they did have COVID really did a number on them being you know, they are getting things situated uh, their EBITDA in 2023 is 15.83 billion their debt was 38.64 billion uh, my rule of thumb is I like companies have more than three times their EBITDA in debt. That shows if there were any financial struggles or anything major was to happen to it and they needed to take out debt, it'd be a little bit harder for them. Uh, and again, that's just my personal parameters that I look at. That's not like the end all uh, way of looking and doing evaluations. Uh, the dividend, they did cut it and brought it back uh, last year, 30 cents, and then they increased it to 45 cents. So. I think they pay this, pay this uh, semi-annually. I think it's twice a year. Um, shares outstanding. Let's take a look here. Been pretty stagnant, but again, they've been they've had a 
free cash flow issue for a little bit. I had to spend that dividend, but it is back. And I have a feeling they're going to start buying back those shares here in the next couple years. And um, things are going to go back to the way they were for old Disney. I, I'm very confident that they're going to be able to get everything under control. Uh, EPS average for uh, 2024 is $4.75, increasing to $4.90. So, decent little amount of growth there for their EPS. And uh, revenue, $91.36 billion, growing to $96.15 billion from this year to the next year. So, some uh, nice little bit of growth there as well. You're not going to get a whole lot, big ton, triple digit, double digit growth with the revenue. But Disney is a nice, mature company. They're not going anywhere. Uh, what everyday money says, uh, everything money says is, uh, if I gave you $178 billion right now, could you go compete with Disney? You, you probably can't. And uh, that's just how big a moat that this company has. Next up, question two. Could you review MPW by Dizzy 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 7? I sure can. All right, Medical Properties Trust. This is a REIT. REITs are taxed differently. Again, always do your own research. Uh, MPW, I would not touch with anything. I, I, I wouldn't even take a chance at a uh, YOLO turnaround play. Uh, this company has a lot of issues, as you see here. An extreme fall from grace, uh, down 77.2% over the last five years, over the last 10 years, down 67.97%. Um, just nothing is really ticking in the right direction, it seems. Uh, if you see here, quarter over quarter, revenue is trending down. Free cash flow is trending down. There's some negative quarters thrown in there. Net income is down. Um, debt is kind of all over the place. Uh, REITs usually carry a lot of debt, though, so, like, but it, it, it's pretty heavy leveraged, I believe. Let's see, their EBITDA in 2023 was negative, so we'll look at 2022, it was $658 million, uh, and their debt was $10.27 billion, so that's, like, 15-plus times leverage, that's, Way too much. Way too much. Uh, Vici's like 5 to 7 percent. Uh, not percent. 5 to 7 times. This is crazy. This is a lot. <laughs> uh, and uh, they cut their dividend, which is never a good sign. And I keep hearing like whispers that they might cut it again. And uh, a double cut would be catastrophic. Uh, and uh, the the issue with them is uh, the uh, one interest rates being higher for longer, of course, hurts a lot of REITs, hurts a lot of your uh, your debt heavy companies and holdings. Um, their two biggest tenants, I, I, my percentages might be off here, but they're like two, two top two or three tenants make up over fifty percent of their income. Uh, you never want that. Uh, again, my number might be off a little bit, but like their top two or three make up a huge portion of the money that they make. And uh, one of their tenants, again, this is one of their huge ones, uh, was having issues making payments, and they were loaning them money to pay them their rent. Doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense if you ask me. <laughs> Hey, I'm short on my rent this month. Uh, can I borrow it? But you owe it to me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, it's the reason why I like uh, a really income and agree realty so much when it comes to REITs is they are diversified. They are diversified really well. Um, so if like one of their companies was to go under, whatever happens they'll dip but they'll bounce back mpw their top one or two go down this company's shot is done but again my personal opinion i wouldn't touch it uh year over year revenue does not look like it is increasing any and uh, again interest rates are going to be higher for longer and that's going to do nothing but make their situation worse but yeah uh sorry if that's not what you wanted to hear but not going to sugarcoat it. MPW looks very scary at the moment. 
Uh, next up by Sethro Boldline nine one three would love to see you cover UGI. Maybe culture will show something I'm not seeing, but I like it below twenty five. You want to take a looky? We got a twenty two thirty eight UGI just free cash flow yield eight point nine nine percent. Got dividend yield six point seven percent. Payout ratio is negative, but this is a utility, so that's not completely outside the realm of possibilities to see for them. Uh, let's take a look here. Over the last five years, down 57.94%. That's a little worrisome. Uh, Ten years, down 33.83%. Okay, they are just as cheap as they were during covid Let's take a deep dive here and see what is going on. So, revenue is kind of flat-ish, slowly going up a little bit. Uh, free cash flow was trending in the right direction. Looks like I had a little dip, though. Uh, EPS is negative. I want to know why that's negative. UGI. Last couple quarters have been positive, which isn't, you know, okay. Uh, the cash flow also was positive last quarter. Uh, I don't know what's up with this EPS. <clears throat> I don't know if they had a big, uh, like a one-time debt deal that they needed to cover, and they ended up having to issue more shares. Because if you look here, the uh, the share count jumped from 2021 to 2022, but it went back down in 2023. I don't know what this what happened here. I'd have to look into that more. Uh, upsize convertible senior note offering. Okay. Um, dividend grown at a rate of 6.67% over the last 10 years. Been slowing a little bit as of late. Did they suspend their dividend? No, it's still there. Hmm. I don't know. When it when it comes to like utility companies, uh, they're not leveraged too terribly. I know I'm getting distracted here. Six point one five billion in 2022 is two point one five billion, so it's not even three times. So I mean that's not terrible. They just have to. I would see what happened here if the EPS. My personal opinion is uh, there are possibly better uh, utility companies out there uh, that I would trust a little bit more. Uh, again, I don't know a whole lot about them I just, of course i'll take a look at them uh eps 230 uh, 293 growing to 294 so not too much going on there 841 going to 926 billion over next year so there's a nice little bit of growth there they are issuing convertible senior notes so that mean that they are taking out additional money from somewhere uh my personal opinion is I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't, but uh, I understand the appeal behind utilities. A lot of them pay really good uh, dividends, and uh, you know, who doesn't like big dividends? Uh, I just I think that there are a couple others out there that I would like a little bit more. Uh, XL Energy is one, just for an example, that I would look into. If you were looking into a, uh, you were dead set on adding a utility, uh, XL, it's had a rough time, but I think that this is an excellent utility to have over the last 10 years, up 66.69%. Uh, another popular one that I see a lot of, not AED, it's AEP, American Electric Power AEP. This is one I see a lot of uh, people that have a utility owning. Uh, if you are looking for renewable energy, there is always Next Era Energy. They did have a massive fall uh, over last year, so you were able to get this thing in like the 40s and 50s at one point. But uh, this is another one you possibly want to look at as well. Uh, but yeah, utility companies—they're more for people that you're looking for income and stability now. And definitely once interest rates and stuff start getting cut back, it's going to help them in a lot of uh, your interest-sensitive uh, holdings. 
Uh, now, next up, we have Bugsy Vane commenting, Give up, you've got no swag. Well, that's me. Tindo McGoblin. If you had to invest in one stock for the rest of your for the rest of time, what would it be? And are you planning on doing any more stock talks with other YouTubers? So I would love to do more stock talks with people. I think I I really enjoyed whenever I talked to Ryan Williams. That man is amazing, by the way. Super awesome dude. Uh, but if I could only one own one stock for the rest of my life, I'll do I'll show you a stock and an ETF. I can only own one. Uh, stock MasterCard got to be MasterCard. Love this company. Over the last five years, up sixty five point seven three percent. Over the last ten, up four hundred and ninety three percent. This thing is a beast. 0.59% dividend yield, so it's not too high. Payout ratio 19.54%. But this thing has a moat and a half. It's why I love it. It's why I'm still investing in it and I'm still buying it. Uh, revenue, 11.64% over the last 10 years. Uh, we've got total master cards out there increasing year over year. Free cash flow, 11.71% over the last 10 years. Absolutely beautiful. EPS, 16.54% over the last 10 years. Uh, they are aggressively buying back shares. Uh, share count's been decreasing over two and a half, right at 2.5% over the last 10 years. Another thing to like about MasterCard is the dividend hikes. Over the last 10 years, been increasing at a rate of 19.62%, and they have been increasing it at this rate for a while this thing looks like just a set of stairs up and to the right there is a lot to love about mastercard for the long term now we take a look at the analysts what they think eps growth fourteen dollars and ninety two uh, twenty nine cents growing to sixteen fifty seven so nice double digit growth still out of their eps and revenue uh, 27.83 billion grown to 31.28 billion from this year to next year. So again, nice double digit growth. And have I mentioned anything about that return on capital? Look at that. 55.56%. You could cut this thing in half twice, twice. And it would still be more than most companies. The average is like nine to 10%. And, uh, when it comes to their debt, debt's not an issue. Look at that, they have $13.54 billion in debt. You might be thinking, oh, that's a whole lot. Well, their EBITDA is 15.35. That's not even one times leverage if you compare it to their EBITDA. And they have over $9 billion in uh, cash. Well, let's see what was updated. $7.66 billion. So they're st still looking good. Love this company. I can't brag enough. I can make a whole video about MasterCard and why I love it. Uh, but... As kind of add to the question, if I could only own one stock, if it was a ETF, it would be Schwab U.S. Large Cap Growth, SCHG. Uh, over the last five years, 147.52%. Over the last 10 years, 329%. What makes it tick? Well, first of all, real low expense ratio, 0.04%. And uh, the top 10 holdings in this are phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Look at this top 10. Look at this. We got Microsoft 12.37%, Apple 11.53%, NVIDIA 11.4%, uh, Amazon 6.5%, Facebook at 4 uh, We got Google A and C at 3.94 and 3.3 so you might as well just say over seven and broadcom 2.72 elili 2.59 and tesla at 2.47 all these are absolutely just bangers straight up awesome i i love this i love the allocation with it uh and it's got 251 holdings so good amount of holdings in it as well and uh, it's not just tech obviously there's a lot of tech in it uh but it's got i think like mastercard and visa are also in here probably i think it has costco as well thrown in there absolutely amazing i love it as you see here it is pretty heavy in tech but you've also got these other sectors that are thrown in there to help with the allocations a little bit but yeah that's everything i got for you and i hope you enjoyed that as always Hit that like and subscribe button for me. I greatly appreciate it. And until next time, take care. See you.